So in section 5.3, let's go about to prove that we have some similar triangles. But before we do that, let's remember what we had to go through to prove that triangles were congruent. Congruent means that the triangles had the same shape and they were the exact same size. And if you remember our reasons, side, 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 all three sides were congruent. Side, angle, side, a side, the included angle, and a second side were congruent across two triangles. Angle, side, angle, so two angles with the included side were congruent. Angle, angle, side, so two angles and then the non-included side. And then for your right triangles, there was also hypotenuse leg. If you had a right triangle, two right triangles and their hypotenuse and legs were congruent, those would be congruent to triangles. So uh, those are the type of reasons that we're going to use to prove that triangles are similar. It's just that the angles will have to be congruent but the sides will have to be in proportion. That's what we have to remember. All right, so if the three angles of one triangle are congruent to the three angles of the second triangle, then they must be similar. All right, so we have a, you know, a picture. We had a picture right here of that scenario. These two triangles are obviously the same shape. They're not the same size. But these two angles were corresponding and congruent. These two angles were corresponding and congruent. Same here. So if you had all three angles being congruent, you obviously have a similar triangle. Oh, however, you know what? If we know that the sum of all the angles have to add up to 180, we really do not have to prove three angles are congruent. We really only have to prove two, because if two of them are congruent, the third one has to equal. Okay, so we're going to call that AA, angle, angle. If two angles of one triangle are congruent with two angles of another triangle, they must be similar. So rather than having to prove all three angles, we're just going to use two. So let's take a look here. We're given this diagram and we're told that segment AB is perpendicular to segment DE. And we want to prove that ABC is congruent with EDC. All right, well, you know what? Angle 1 is going to be congruent with angle 2. And why would that be? Because they're vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent. So there's one set of angles we know are congruent. Now, if I have par parallel lines cut by a transversal, We'll call this angle 3 and we'll call this angle 4. They will also be congruent. We know that angle 3 is congruent with angle 4. Why? Parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. And so these two triangles have two congruent angles. So therefore, uh, again, so that's saying that angles are congruent. So I can say triangle. Now let's be careful of the name. The, uh, the vertex that does not have an angle number associated with it. A to the vertex with two uh, arcs. B to the vertex that has one mark. So no marks, two arcs, one arc is congruent with triangle. No arcs, 
two arcs, one arc. The names of the vertices have to be in order because A corresponds to E, B corresponds to D, and of course C corresponds to itself. So what reason would we give? We would say angle, angle. They're similar because they have two angles that are congruent. So we know that they are the same shape. Not, we don't know that they are the same size. But they are similar triangles. So since I have similar triangles, remember when we had that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent? We can also draw some other conclusions about our similar triangles, and that is the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So this side, the ratio of this side to this side is the same as the ratio of this side to this side, is the same as the ratio of this side to this side. They're all in proportion. We also know that the corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. So now, now I can use those reasons as well. So although this uh, reason says corresponding sides of similar, and they definitely have the word t, uh, letter T in there standing for triangles, you could use this reason even if you had similar pen, uh, hexagons, if you had similar decagons. We would say corresponding parts, corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. We would just keep the T in there because we know we mean for a polygon. So if sides are proportional, it's not surprising that the corresponding altitudes, the lengths of the corresponding altitudes of similar triangles have the same ratio. So if the sides are in proportion, the altitudes are also in proportion. So if one triangle is twice as big as the second, the first triangle's altitude would be two times as large as the altitude of the second. Okay, that proportion holds not just for side lengths, but also for altitude measurements. So that's AA. AA, two angles are congruent. That's enough to say two triangles are similar. Now, if I can prove that the sides and the included angles, if the sides are proportional and the angles are congruent, I can say those triangles are similar. And we would call that side angle side similar. That's the reason, side angle side similar. That says the sides, the sides are not congruent. The sides are proportional. So we have side angle side and we also have side 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 similar which means all three sides across two triangles all three sides across two triangles are all in proportion so really what what would that look like we're, we're saying a lot of words but let's get an example let's say I have this triangle and this is one, three, and um, seven. I don't even know if that's a valid numbers for a triangle. We'll get to that. But then I have, here's this triangle. Looks like the same shape. It's obviously not the same size. Let's say that's two, six, and 14. What's the ratio of these sides? Small triangle to big triangle. What's the ratio of these sides? Th small triangle to big triangle. I now have our proportion. What's the ratio of these sides? Small triangle to big triangle. 
This is an extended proportion. And you know what? This can be reduced 1 to 2. This can be reduced 1 to 2. So we would say that these sides are in proportion. That's what we mean by that. All right, and then if I have a triangle and I have a line segment, and here is segment one, and here is segment two, and here is segment three, and here is segment four. If by drawing this segment, segment one to segment three, is the same ratio as segment two to segment four, then this line must be parallel with this line. If the segments are proportional, equally proportional, that means that this segment is parallel to the third side of the triangle. And we actually have done an example of this, only we called it the midpoint not just any point.